<laughs> hey guys, this is Kyle with Narrative. We're talking with Jonathan Zuderman today. How's it going, John? Hey, good to be here. Yeah. So, uh, how's your how's your Calgary life going? How's things going this season? Is uh, you don't really have like a wedding season or anything that you're no, um, <laughs> no. So I generally avoid shooting weddings. I uh, I've done a few, um, and will still potentially do some more when it's uh, close friends or a really cool location or something. But um, yeah, I'm more photographically on the I'd say like the editorial creative side and. Um, love kind of telling stories with visuals and love working with other creators. Like um, let's say working with musicians and artists is a, is one cool. that I love. My, one of my roommates is actually an R and B artist <laughs> based out of the awesome. city here. So um, we've had some fun over the years, kind of dabbling with stuff for him and a number of other folks in the city. But um, yeah, a lot of my day to day is actually running you know, co-leading Socality, um, which is a creative community organization. We're based out of Calgary here, but uh, we get to do stuff all over Canada and then um, into the States, not as much in the States and globally since COVID. We were kind of all yeah. over the place pre-COVID. And then uh, like everybody, we kind of got a lot more local and um, that kind of coincided with an opportunity to do a lot more with Canon actually, which was cool. kind of a crazy opportunity as someone who had shot with that brand since I was, you know, kind of day one. Um, definitely never thought when I picked up uh, a camera <laughs> like used as a, yeah. a like 20 something person <laughs> that fast forward like 10 plus years and I'd be like working with that brand or doing stuff with them. So it's been yeah, kind of incredible, crazy like journey, so people, but so many people chase after that. Like I've been trying to get Leica to pay attention. To <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, and they have no interest in it whatsoever. Um, and it's just like, all right, that's fine. And you know, I could want it, but the mm -hmm. fact that like Canon sees what you're doing from your community standpoint and your just individual work standpoint is like such a huge, a huge token to say like how, how great you are, what you're doing. Well, and to speak to that, like just briefly, like I think I've had lots of people at different times that are like, hey, how do I become an ambassador? Or how do I do this? And how do you know, and having got to work kind of on both sides, you know, be on that side early on being like, oh, tagging every photo, like, how do you get different brands to notice you or um, and then being on the flip side, kind of working with the brands and you just see a very different perspective and, and you realize there's you know, hundreds or thousands of creators out there that take great photos. Yeah. Um, and so it's less about just taking a good photo and more about what does a brand actually need? Like, what are they looking for? What, what ticks the boxes of, you know, um, yeah, what benefits them? What makes, what are they looking for in either an ambassador or in people that they're going to work with? And, um, and so for us, it was, it was, we met a bit of a need more on the community like building side where we were doing stuff that um i think they saw in other different cities and with just how mobile we were and what we were doing with bringing people together like that we're shooting already in different you know different ways and um and that was a need for them <laughs> and then interestingly enough they didn't you know the canadian team didn't really have a, a structured ambassador program hmm. at the time and so it was kind of interesting <clears throat> for us to kind of we just, I think, as a part of our working with them, almost pitched them on a baseline kind of um, simple ambassador kind of thing. It was more just with our team saying, hey, cool. we'd love to represent you. Like, do this. You know, could we work something out um, along with that? Very organic. Honestly, it was all just kind of. Um, but then in meeting that need, it almost inspired them to then think more clearly about an ambassador program. And so then like that led to them actually launching an ambassador program in Canada. And, um, you know, and so it's kind of cool. Like I think too often as, as creators, it's kind of just, Oh, notice me, like, this is what I'm doing, but not looking at what is the brand, like, what do the brands yeah. need, you know? Um, cause there's, you know, on a just pure photographic basis, it's like, yeah, I take good photos, but so does hundreds of other people in this country, right? Like, um, there's people that have been doing, you know, like succeeded in all kinds of different yeah. spheres and, it, and it's so relative, you know, even objectively, you know, um, yeah, the pool of the pool of talent, just like scrolling through any, yeah. any app right now you know? is just out of it's bonkers. It's just so, so much, but it's, it comes down to really like, what's the value you bring, you know, what need are you meeting for those brands and, and availability and like how easy are you to work with and all of those things. So, 
um, it's been cool, but it's been, uh, I think my favorite part is just getting to connect with so many people as a part of what we get to do and meet so many creators and, um, and then get yeah, to your events of, are pretty yeah. large, right? You're, you're doing pretty large events for Socality. Like I was just yeah. scrolling through and just seeing pretty big group photos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we love the group photo. <laughs> it's been kind yeah. of a, um, but yeah, uh, I would say it really ranges, but our, our kind of creative experience events that we do, um, they tend to range anywhere for probably like a hundred to 200 people. Um, wow. sometimes a little less, but they're definitely on the larger, larger scale. Um, we've got one coming up actually where we just booked, a the football stadium, um, here in cool. Calgary. Uh, and so we're going to have some fun, like a mix of kind of like athletics stuff and editorial. And, um, yeah, honestly, we just love kind of thinking outside the box and imagining a place or a location that we'd want to create in. And yeah. then just kind of try and make that happen for a bunch of other people and then use it as a, use it as a way to kind of bring people together at the same time. That's really awesome. Yeah. I feel like with the, with the Canon side of things, it's, um, it's not too dissimilar to like when I was first starting out and trying to get more wedding blog features, mm -hmm. I was just trying to just send in pretty work and then, and then it hit me somewhere along the way and I built relationships with editors and magazines and I was like, what do you guys need? Yeah. What are you, what do you need for this season or this year or whatever it may be? Let me go make that and then mm -hmm. bring it to you. And that created these like total different partnership in the way that I not only just photograph the wedding, but just have engagements with these other brands and, and uh, relationships. Um, so I think taking that, like, I think about, I really wanted the cover of Rangefinder years yeah. ago. It was like a thing I yeah. like really targeted after. And it's not an accident. That doesn't happen because the yeah. editor just happens to email me and say, hey, we want this. Mm -hmm. I had to really like chase after it, say, what do you need? Mm -hmm. What is it that you guys want? And I will build around that. Um, and I think that it's just that little different energy or perspective shift on things. And obviously like it's been super successful for you with Canon and um, similarly. So I'm sure with even like your uh, SoCali events, it's like, yeah. what do, what does the community need right now? Yeah. Like what is, what is, what is that buying for? What do you think the the thing is right now that you're hoping like, like it's kind of post COVID everybody's, you know, obviously for the most part, I'd say things are normal ish. Yeah. Um, and like, what's, what's the need right now? I think the biggest need we see is just creators want to do this full time <laughs> for in a lot of cases. Right. So it's just yeah. financial sustainability, like stability, you know? And I think that's kind of, um, I, I think from my perspective, probably the, one of the biggest ones for everybody, it's like, yeah, people want to get better. You know, they want to improve, they want to grow, but, um, especially the ones that are past maybe that first stage where you're kind of you start to kind of know who you are. They've kind of got established a little. I think so much of it's, they're just trying to find ways to, you know, not be on this cyclical kind of uncertainty that can come with that freelance, you know, yeah. but, you know, um, weddings are a little different, you know, when you're booking your, you know, if you've got that client base to book years in advance yeah, or, 10, you know, like out. I think the more established on like the wedding side, like weddings is probably one of the one of the reasons so many people get into it is because it can offer that level of stability that I think, you know, semi, you know, or if you, you know, if you're smart with it. Um, but at the same time, it's just like weddings aren't for everybody. Like I'm a testament to that. Right. Like um, I enjoy, like I said, I enjoy the odd one, but like I, I couldn't, I couldn't see myself getting excited about doing that on a day to day, week to week kind of like, you know, annual basis where that was just don't have a passion for it. Right. On a, yeah. Um, and so there's lots of people that have so many different, you know, areas of creativity that they want to, um, explore. And so I think for us, it's just, how do we continue to, you know, resource and find ways to kind of, yeah, bring that knowledge, connect people. The network is so huge. I think as you've probably seen, it's like yeah. the, who, you know, um, and getting, you know, makes such a difference. It's like so, the littlest big yeah. industry community it yeah. overlaps in so many ways from weddings to portrait to sports mm -hmm. events and things like that. I know like my consistency issue with weddings was for three months out of the year, I'm stressed. Yeah. Consistently, yeah. I know year over year, it's going to be fine. Yeah. I know it's going to be fine, but I would find myself <laughs> in the shower worrying about it. Mm -hmm. Be like, man, I sure hope that that photo does really well so that someone will see it and like it and email me and pay me so that I can pay rent and order pizza. Yeah. And it's like three months of that. And then the rest of the year is chill. Mm -hmm. But would you say like, as obviously the community is looking for that stability and trying to go full time with things as we've got TikTok, Instagram, Reels, Glass, mm -hmm. and everything else in between going on, um, what's, 
what's the way to navigate around that or what's the hurdles with that that you've seen up close with these people who are just just kind of on the cusp of turning it into a full a full-time financial stability business for them yeah i don't know it's a it's a weird it's kind of a unique time because i think obviously like there's so many there's so many layers like to that right it's like um i think there's so many questions that people are asking because there's the positioning like what is my you know what is my thing and i think there's that question of am i you know obviously people are growing huge platforms still by ultra kind of niching down to like doing one very clear very thing specific, on yeah. like TikTok reels, you know, and I've seen a number of, you know, from YouTube style, you know, creators to wedding photographers that are basically just marketing themselves through like very clear, like talking head, you know, like value added content, you yeah. know, on, on TikTok or reels. Um, and it's, I've seen people grow, yeah, significantly. Um, and that's a, that can be one, one tool to like strategically, you know, get yourself out there, build, build that audience. And, um, but it's also tough because not everybody has that desire or this feeling of confidence to build that kind of stuff. I've never, I yeah. personally have never been someone who, you know, probably do a little bit more, but I've never been someone who's just like, felt like I wanted to do like talking head (laughs) reels or, or put myself as this like major personality for my brand. You know, I think for me, it was always like the art was kind of first. And I know there's a lot of people that feel that way or wrestle with that, where it's like, do I to grow or to put myself out there? Do I have to do that? Or do I have to, you know, just because somebody's seeing success there, like, does it have to be one or the other? And I think there's this, yeah. Yeah, it used to be like I just put out really beautiful work mm-hmm. and put some really sad quotes on it from Tumblr or my mind. Yeah. And that, that worked. worked. That yeah. was great. I didn't have to be a person mm-hmm. on the internet. I could kind of mm-hmm. share my deeper inner feelings through like what I was writing, but mm-hmm. I didn't have to share myself. And even this job, this is <clears throat> this is the first time I've ever really had to be on camera so consistently. Yeah. Um, and look at myself and edit myself right? and clip it all together and try mm-hmm. to make it entertaining yeah. or interesting at least valuable yeah yeah and it's such a different it's such a different approach and before i could tell that a lot of my external personality was really hidden through my work mm-hmm. people would meet me at workshops or work with me on a day or something and they'd go oh i thought you were going to be a lot more reserved or like quiet and deep and brooding and i was like no i'm loud and obnoxious and my work is quiet mm-hmm. <laughs> and so Clearly, I wasn't really putting my external self out there, and mm-hmm. so it's such a different, it's such a different take. And I, I personally don't even I I refuse to download TikTok just because <laughs> I I do not. I've already got Reddit. Reddit yeah. already takes all my time. Yeah, I don't need another thing. But it's just um, I know the content that's going out there, and mm-hmm. the the stuff that I used to put out every day was just a photo and some captions. But the amount of work that it takes to like build this new mm-hmm. platform and identity or space or try to carve yourself out a little a little spotlight is just so much. Um, And my, seems like a ton. My encouragement, I think to most people is like, it is overwhelming if you're looking at everybody else, (laughs) like to an extent, like, I think if you're looking at, um, and I think it's so critical to kind of take the time to really, um, if you're in that exploratory phase, like put zero expectation on it (laughs) and just go make a bit of everything, jump in, say yes, do the, you know, and, um, and like, let it be fun. Like take the, you know, take the job that turns out to be hard or the client that was rough or whatever and navigate it, figure it out, you know? Um, and then while in that, try and align with people who are a few steps ahead of you and like build those relationships. Cause you'll accelerate a lot quicker when you can bounce things off of them and learn from them. Yeah. I was, you know, I was like a yes man for the first few mm-hmm. years of my business. Like anything you want to throw at me, let's do it. I was not mm-hmm. in the business. I did not have the luxury of saying no for mm-hmm. a really long time. And then my goal was always, especially in, within an industry, like be the dumbest person in the room consistently. Yeah. If I am the dumbest person in the room, there's so much to learn. Um, and anytime I found myself as the smartest person in the room, I was like, well, a, why am I here? And B, am I making money for this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if I'm not, let's go find other places where everyone around me is so much more established or intelligent than me and learn from their, their ways about it. Yeah. Yeah. And and then I think you get like, 
It's funny you said that. Yes. Like, I think there's, I, I see it as like two seasons in life for most of us. It's like, we have yes, yes seasons. And then no seasons. It's kind of like, it's like you say yes to almost everything because it's like exploratory and there's discovery and there's all of these, you know, good things that come like in kind of a growth window where yeah. your creativity is kind of fresh. And I think it, I think it cycles too. I think we actually, I don't think it's like just one season of life. I think you go through a yes season, you know, that for me was a lot of that early Instagram years, early photography stuff, just finding my style, figuring it all out, um, <clears throat> going lots of places, shooting lots of things. Yeah. Um, and I then still I, say yes to new stuff, like yeah. I'm 10 years deep into it full time. And even as recent as last fall, I took something totally new, mm -hmm. like a clothing line, fashion space, e-commerce e kind of thing. And I've never shot that kind of thing. Yeah. And it was so interesting to shoot it prepare for it, plan for it, see all the pitfalls of how mm -hmm. it was put together and then see all the mistakes I made along the way and go, whoa, it's been a while since I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Right. Um, yeah. And it was kind of cool. It's, it's nice to be in that space and go, Ooh, there's like plenty of room to learn. And when we hit those, cause then I think you get a bit established, you're clear. And then in order to actually see growth from that place, you have to kind of like say no to lots and, yeah. and cut, cut things out and be like, no, I'm only taking this. or I'm just going to focus on this. And I really want to lean. It's like you talking about those covers and some of these, it's like you get clear, you know? Um, but then I think a lot of people hit another cycle where there's that stagnation and you're like, ah, like creative discomfort. And, you know, it's like, okay, I've been kind of, I know this is my thing and people know me for this, but I'm not that excited about it anymore. And like, you know, and I think in those seasons, it's like, you got to kind of in that same way, it's like, okay, it's just another discovery. It's like back to discovery. Yeah. Like what, what got me here in the first place? Okay. We need another season of, oh, someone's invited me to go here. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go there or do that. Or ah, I don't know if I'm really that comfortable with sports, but yeah, let's, let's go shoot some sports or go create some whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, and letting yourself kind of go, well, I've, I've built this and now what if I added this and, and how would that change the way I see and how would that inject new life or excitement or creativity into, you know, cause I, yeah, I think the minute we stop <laughs> like growing or discovering, I think we, you know, we do get, um, yeah, I think that that's where some of that, um, discomfort, like, I don't know, um, even just, I think it can lose a lot of the life. You know, I think I've seen a lot of people yeah. that are really like passionate about their creativity and, um, because maybe there wasn't the opportunity to kind of further like open those doors or, or kind of inject another yeah. cycle of, of discovery. It can kind of just die or you see, you know, people who you're yeah, like, or even just, yeah. Or even just deciding what you want to do with the thing. Like mm -hmm. I've been, my money comes from weddings, but yeah. I've been shooting portraits at a, what I, what I consider a pretty, a pretty high level yeah. for years now. Yeah. I've never made a buck from those. Yeah. Those are just me just passion wanting mm -hmm. to go make stuff. And then more recently, <clears throat> more recently, uh, a really high end artist friend of mine said, Hey, why don't you have like a solo exhibition with these mm -hmm. pieces? And I never even knew that was a thing. I didn't yeah. even know that was possible for mm -hmm. me. I've only ever been in the business of a client wants something they commission me for it. I produce it and then I deliver it. Not I make whatever I want mm -hmm. and then I stick it on a wall and hope some right? artsy yeah. fartsy guys buy it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's the new thing that I'm trying to figure out. It's a really super scary, weird mm -hmm. place to do um, and go, okay, well, this is, this is a whole nother lane. I've never been here. I have an established body mm -hmm. of work and established career over here, but let's be really nervous over here for mm -hmm. a little while. And it's pretty cool to just be kind of on my back heels a little bit. That's really cool. What, uh, what have you found like has shifted inside of you as you've kind of like, it has it made you want to pursue. Cause it sounds to me like the, the fine art creative side is maybe like, yeah, you do the weddings and I'm sure there's passion yeah. there, but probably like a lot yeah. of people, it, it is work, <laughs> you know, yeah. whether you, I mean, like, I'm pretty transparent. I've told know? people my, my, my wedding passion has really drifted off. And I mean, yeah. I've been making a career transition mm -hmm. for a bit now. And it's something that before I go to a wedding, I started catching myself and I was yeah. like, man, I don't really want to be here. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. That's not good for my clients. And I've, I've said for years, as soon as you're just doing it for mm. cash, you yeah, just, absolutely. You get out. Um, so I've noticed it's more like, my 
my future planning is kicking in. So like I have mm. a body of work that I'm going to yeah. do a show for and I'm going to put together and I've got a, I'm working on a space and I've got mm. a guy who's going to frame it and I've got a band and wine and yeah. all that jazz. Um, and I go, cool, that's neat. Let me do the first mm -hmm. one. But then I'm really excited at the idea of like the next one where I can mm. plan for it and say, all right, I want eight specific pieces that look this certain way that's yeah. been floating around in my head for a while. Yeah. And that's what that show is going to be. Mm. And so I've just never been able to like do anything like that before. Yeah. As a wedding, it's it's not my work. I can yeah. create my website and things, but I can never really plan for a uh, a series mm -hmm. of images, which is pretty cool. And yeah. so I'm already like two or three shows advanced in my brain. I'm like, all right, let's just get this first one done. Yeah. Um. So it'll be it'll be neat, and there's totally a vanity thing to it. I'm like, oh a show just for me everyone's yeah. here just for me yeah. like i'm not some back hallway guy i'm like yeah. i'm the main exhibit okay <laughs> um it totally leans on that i'm like that's fine that's cool yeah was it has it taken time to get there to feel comfortable like have you are you somebody that has had a hard time i don't know i relate to this i'm just you know curious but yeah. where when you shoot a wedding or you shoot a commercial piece or you shoot something for somebody else you can kind of hide a little bit like or um, like i mean i've never had a problem sharing original work but i think I think the idea in the context of like selling it um, or where you're, you know, like the show or I think for probably myself and a lot of creators, there's, there can be that little bit of a, well, now it's now I, now I'm in the spotlight and then the perfectionism yeah. and the, like all the voices and all the stuff kind of can rise up a little bit. Like, um, I'm not too worried about that. I have had some nervousness in terms of like, is this worth anyone's time or money mm -hmm. kind of a thing yeah. just because I've never made a dollar from it. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, been making tens of thousands from weddings. Yeah. So I, I know my weddings are totally worth the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm struggling more in life right now where in photography, I'm super confident, like mm -hmm. in a wedding, a model, a portrait session, a meeting, whatever. I'm like, so my whole confidence mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. Anywhere else in my life, it's struggling. <laughs> so, yeah. um, in that space, it feels pretty good. Cause I don't know, for years I've had photographers and friends telling me like, why aren't you doing agency mm -hmm. work or why yeah. aren't you doing this? And I've just said, well, it, it doesn't make any money and I'm already making a lot of money over here. On the and weddings. then I get to yeah. just do this whenever I want. And like my, I tell models when I photograph them, I'm like, here's the deal. It's one day or six months. That's the delivery window. There's not a lot of information. You're <laughs> yeah. going to get it tomorrow or you're going to get it when I get to it. Yeah. And, and then I, the, I love that like, if I cancel a shoot, if I'm just not feeling it, if I just yeah. don't feel it, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do this. And that's a really cool power to have when I don't have that power on the other side of my work. Yeah. So I think for me, it's just like, I feel pretty stoked about it because I get to pull all the levers, mm -hmm. which is what I like about model photography is that I get to control the when, the where, the who, the what, the why, everything and what it looks like is pretty much up to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so having a show like this lets me totally have control over everything. And I'm pretty confident when I have control over everything. Um, so it's kind of a weird, funky space, but I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. And That's really exciting. I There's a couple of images I'm like really stoked to get printed up in like mm -hmm. uh, 48 by 63, yeah. which is this like grand cinema size. And I'm just, even if they don't sell, that's fine. They're going to yeah. go on my wall. <laughs> I'm yeah. super stoked for them. Yeah. That's exciting, man. Yeah, it's pretty neat. My my friend, Brittany Mara, she's, uh, she sells like seven to $10,000 abstract art prints. So yeah. she's like really, really successful. And she was the one that said, you should, you, you make art, you know, mm -hmm. you could have an art show, <laughs> um, which was just so baffling to me from a place of, well, I only think about my camera as a tool to make money typically for, for like, others or like as yeah, a service, yeah. as a service. Yeah. I like think I that's, have two Nikons yeah. and they don't come out unless I'm making cash. Like they're in a box yeah. otherwise, unless it's work. And then I have mm -hmm. fun cameras and fun cameras to me are just they're fun. They're for me yeah. to like go take photos of my friends and give them really high quality images and mm -hmm. then not think about it. Yeah. I think that's empowering though for a lot of people. Cause I, I think, um, I think the tendency can be to write your, like look at other people and go, Oh, they're artists or like that their photo could sell yeah. for X or that, you know, or write fine art, you know, or any of that off is kind of like a, an ideal, um, but I think there's a lot of creators that that's the gift. It's not, you know, there's people that I think that 
they're super skilled at commercial photography or commercial video or, you know, um, the commercial side and are passionate about it. Love bringing someone's vision or someone's idea to life and, um, or weddings, right? Like I know so many wedding photographers that are deeply passionate about, um, giving someone that experience and documenting it and the storytelling that goes along with it. And, um, but I think there's a lot of photographers that are similar to a director, right? Like a film director where it's like, Mm -hmm you know, or an artist and, and there's a vision and there's like something that needs to come out. And, um, I think it can be frustrating if it just resides in the commercial space or in a service oriented space and it never gets the space to actually start to work yeah, its way I've out. I've always identified. So like, uh, my very first workshop I went to was heck photo camp years ago mm-hmm. and, uh, Parker Fitzgerald, or Parker Fitzpatrick, yeah, I think it's Parker Fitzgerald was speaking there, and uh, he he made a big note about like, listen, you're not a photographer. Mm-hmm. Everybody here mm-hmm. is identifying as photographers. You're a wedding photographer. Own it. Like that is mm-hmm. who you are. And I, from that moment forward, I've always been really proud about like, oh hi, what do you do for work? Oh, I'm I'm a wedding photographer. Yeah. And recently, I met someone and they they introduced themselves, despite being a very successful wedding photographer, as an entrepreneur. Mm. And I kind of got thrown off by it. I was like. Oh, why don't you identify as this thing that you that is your main mm-hmm. lane? Um, and so I've always identified that way, and it's never been like, "Hi, I'm an artist. I'm freelance. I'm mm-hmm. a creative." I don't. It feels it's always been a business identity mindset. Mm-hmm. So shifting mm-hmm. away from that into a space that's not business and truly just creative or artistic has always been really foreign to me. Mm-hmm. And so when I see other people like your work or anybody in that lane that's so talented in this artistic way that. I view things through a technical lens yeah. that I, I always feel like I don't relate or I don't connect. I'm like not part of that tribe. Mm-hmm. But I think that's the shift point of, of even separating those things to go. Like you can be both, you know, yeah. like I, you know, I spend, you know, I've spent most, a large part of the last few years having to put my photography and like the art kind of to the side a little as we've built Socality and spent time, you know, like, yeah, investing in really other creators and and providing value and, and trying to build the community and do all of that. And, um, but in the same way, it's like, you're still, you're still growing. And even in the the seasons where it doesn't look like you have a whole bunch of creative output to show for it, your yeah. life, you know, like, I think we forget how much of our life, um, and our, our experiences and our conversations and all of that is material that's actually, that we can draw on and pull from to, you know, tell yeah. better stories or, um, you know, convey things. Even the, I think the books we're reading, the content we're consuming, the, you know, the stuff that is meaningful to us. I think it's, um, you know, I work closely, my business partner, Scott, he, um, he's on the creative side, more travel, travel kind of landscape, um, you know, kind of creative. Um, and, you know, so his feed, his Instagram feed very much, you know, it's just all these beautiful destinations and reels of like beautiful hotels and, you know, experiences. And, um, but you know, he, he recently like had shared a little bit about his own like battle with anxiety and all of this stuff and, um, and how that had even like manifested as like pretty, you know, like significant pain and, all these different things. And it was just really wild to see, like, even for someone like him, his journey of like, he's been sharing consistently, you know, online for, you know, over 10 years. Um, and people love the stuff he's put out, but when you step, you know, even that moment of just going, Hey, like, (laughs) I know you guys see all of this and it looks great, but here's the reality. (laughs) Right. And, 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 he was just shocked by how many messages and the people that were, you know, commenting and and relating and were like, I've been through this, like, this is, you know, um, thank you for sharing. And I think we forget how much of our own personal story, (laughs) like, you know, even when you're, when we're talking about making art, you know, like matters in the stuff we create. Right. And, and that's the stuff that is the most relatable or it's not always just the beautiful thing or the, you know, but the stuff that's like created out of our pain or our struggle or the, you know, the stuff we're going through often resonates more with people than we think, but we're so scared of sometimes like showing that. 
I get way more responses whenever I, I think maybe starting two, th- three, four years ago or something, I started getting a little bit more um, emotionally vocal yeah. on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I went through a couple summers of really gnarly depression yeah. and suicidal ideations and just like really working through it. And I mean, despite like going to therapy, talking to friends, writing in a journal, all that stuff, mm-hmm. like sometimes the best place for me was just like to write it out and Mm -hmm. fling it onto the internet and whatever, like, and just attach it to a photo because at least if I could attach it to this art thing, it feels like it's kind of all me and Mm -hmm. I can send it out and the messages I get back. And I'm, I'm thankful because it's, I'm sure I have another account like that where it's people that have followed me assume that like, Oh, he's in Seattle and now he's in Spain and he's shooting this beautiful wedding. And that's all he does. When in fact, I'm a professional emailer who sometimes takes photos Yeah. And whenever I've posted that stuff, the the flood of d- direct messages and mm-hmm. people going, I'm so glad someone else is feeling this way. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, you know, if you're successful, you're not going to have these types of anxieties. Yeah. And social media really messed with me for a while. And I try to tell people that it doesn't matter if you're someone who's trying to get 10 likes <laughs> or a thousand likes, the, the feeling sucks both ways. Mm-hmm. It is the, the, the numbers only just change the, like the weight of it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's being as public as you can about like, hey, yeah, it's cool. This job is neat. I get to mm-hmm. like get on a plane and go to a cool country mm-hmm. and shoot a cool thing. But the bad side of that is the pressure that it takes to do and the time away from my dog mm-hmm. and all these other things. And also like I'm navigating all this while trying to look like happy and joyful mm-hmm. online and sell work and have people book me. <laughs> yeah. No, and and the common thread is just like everybody goes through this stuff, and I think that's the, I think unfortunately, like we, we've created such a, you know, I think it's getting better. I think people are being more vocal, but there's still such a tension. I think that for all the vocal kind of conversation around stuff, you're still so <laughs> like prone to then popping on an app or throwing whatever on it everything still looks everything still looks good everything you know and it's like yeah, yeah there's comparing, there's little blips yeah, of your, authenticity yep. but it's like three percent you know or yeah. you know it's like you know in a lot of cases it's like that's a, such a small that i think our brains we know that's the tr- we know that's the case but i think there's that knowing and then actually knowing and the problem is i think we intellectually know that other people go through this stuff but we don't, but then what we're shown almost keeps telling us that, no, that's you. <laughs> like everybody else is doing is fine or they're succeeding yeah. and you're behind and you should be here and whatever, whatever, yeah, whatever, it's right? Comparing your, um, what, one of my quotes or something I've said, like to try to summarize, it was like, I'm comparing my private defeats to mm. these people's public successes. Yeah. And that is never going to win. That's mm-hmm. never going to work in my favor. Um, and so I, I personally have tried to like really aggressively, A, get off my phone. Mm-hmm. B, I don't really scroll Instagram other than stories and it's just my close friends really. Um, I'm just trying to unfollow people. I don't want every time that I have a lapse or a moment in my mm-hmm. day to grab my phone and I have an infinite amount of people's just glory yeah. to look at and go, oh, I'm in my pajamas and I just ate half a pizza <laughs> <sighs> and they're like ripped in my orca right now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, you have to like conscientiously take a step back even though like i want to be i want to be inspired and i want to be influenced by these other artists i work with but um or or even know or don't know yeah um there needs to be a little a boundary there that's pretty hard to to keep in place yeah and i think we're all i think we're all on that journey like i think that's been the the cool thing even no matter who you talk to i mean probably similar to you i we get the opportunity to engage with a lot of creators, whether it's through like the podcast we do or our online workshops or a lot of that, or just in person at events. Like I feel like we're, you know, having a lot of conversations and everybody's got different things, but it's like the, we're all in this together. Like, I think that's the, that's the beautiful thing of it is if we consistently create more space like this and, and, you know, these public forums to um, be vocal, be transparent, be honest about, you know, um, It's hard. It's beautiful. We get to do this, you know, these jobs. I think, you know, um, I had a conversation with a friend yesterday and it's like, yeah, I'm so grateful that I get to, you know, he asked, you know, are you doing the work you want to be doing right now? Like, you know, and it's like, I am and I'm not. 
which is probably an answer for a lot of creative people. It's like, you know, here's the part that I love and I'm grateful for, but here's the areas that I'm like, oh man, I need to automate that. I need to be better at like delegating that. I need to, you know, um, but we, the crazy part is we do get to choose, right? Like, and it's so yeah. easy to get in the cycle and get in the, you know, just next thing, next thing, next thing, and not create enough margin to stop and, you know, be with the people that matter and ask those questions. And um, if anything, I think, you know, that's the part we need most is, you know, I think what you just said about the limiting social and some of these things, just creating more space to, you know, be present, be, you know, um, have those conversations open, you know, whether it's journaling or in conversation with people, you know, we care about or we love, like asking, what do we really want? What are the, you know, what's the, what do I want from my creativity? Do I want to shoot weddings or shoot like commercial or shoot this or do that for the next 10 years? Or, you know, it's like, it sounds like for you, it's like, you've seen a pivot where you're like, man, I'd love to, I'd love to do fine art stuff more regularly. I'd love to build something that could just provide that and and make weddings optional, you know, where it's like, yeah, yeah I'll choose the five weddings or the four weddings or the yeah, two weddings exactly. that I, the dream weddings that I want to shoot or the yeah, people something that, that really brings me with. life or yeah. a couple that I'm like, man, I love you guys. And like, I'd love to document this for you or this, you know, um, as opposed to, man, I need that <laughs> few grand or whatever it is for, yeah. to pay the bills in, you know, December or whatever. Yeah. So I having, guess I'm going to book the luxury that. Like, to create art, art when you don't need it to pay to mm-hmm. keep the lights on is an entirely different space. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like, it's almost like the next step after being a really full-time creative. It's mm-hmm. like, you really want to like work up into it, make this thing, make all your money. Mm-hmm. And then after that, the next really cool hurdle is how can I do this and love it mm-hmm. and it not make money? Um, and it just be a thing that, I just do for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've, I've been really fortunate the last few years to surround myself with a lot of people who speak or feel or, um, you know, express the same way that I feel Mm -hmm. internally. I feel like five or six years ago, that wasn't a big conversation online. It was strictly like, here's my cool pictures. I do cool things. Everything's great. (laughs) My life is perfect. And then if you were the oddball like me and came up and you're like, Hey, I'm actually like really sad all the time. (laughs) It was strange. And now as I scroll through my feed, just, of my direct friends, even just people that are here in Chicago, um, people are just so much more in tune mm-hmm. with that while they're working through their work and mm-hmm. talking about like, oh yeah, it's I have to photograph a wedding this weekend, or I have three photo shoots for this job I have going on, and I'm having a really hard time, but like I'm gonna push through it. And to talk about that rather than just be like, here's three shoots I did, um, has been a cool shift. And those are the yeah. people I associate with. They're the people mm-hmm. I want to hang out with because they understand both sides of it. And it doesn't need to be like, oh, we're friends because we can benefit from one another creatively. We're friends yeah. because we can benefit from one another like as human beings yeah. and emotionally. And I think that's a shift too. I think people, I think as you grow and mature as a creator, um, it does shift from, oh, who are these people I need to be in relationship with because of what I can get or because of the network or the thing or that yeah. you know brand hookup or this contact or this you know to now who are people that actually inspire me and like are living a life like i think it's it goes both ways i think i i'm i in my personal life i'm like i want to live a life that actually not that i have to talk about <laughs> but that inspires the people around me you know to grow and to be healthy and and the same way i think it's it's looking at who are those people that you want to be around that are living those lives, you know, um, where the characters there, where it's like what they're saying on, you know, if they're, if they're sharing content online or they're doing stuff, it's like that the personal life actually lines up with the, yeah. with the spiel. Cause there's lots of people I think that build a whole platform on quote unquote being authentic and, you know, yeah. talking about all this stuff and can be equally messy on the, on the other side. Yeah. It's just like, like content that sells. Um, but when yeah, you photography has find- always been a conduit to meet people. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's great. It's like, it puts me in a room with a dozen people, but I'm not going to like all of the dozen <laughs> everyone. People. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, our values have to line mm-hmm. up. And so the people that are photographer friends of mine, I think about, we met because of that, mm-hmm. but we do not talk about photography. We don't talk yeah. about work. We understand each other's work lives, mm-hmm. which is great. And it's always nice to have freelance friends to be like, Hey, do you want to go spend all day at this coffee shop? Cool. <laughs> but we're not, gonna talk about that it's like 
I want to talk about your life and your values and your goals mm-hmm. and your emotions and the, the park park hangs we're going to do later this week yeah. that have nothing to do with weddings. Um, and so, yeah, it's photography is this really cool conduit, but you're right. It used to be who in this room can benefit me mm-hmm. and like, who, who do I need to go buy a cup of coffee or a beer for and like yeah. buddies with and get something or a referral or whatever. And now it's like, okay, that's cool. I'll take that when it comes up, but mm-hmm. it's definitely not the goal by any means. And a lot of that stuff, I think if you approach relationship in a, in an actual give first mentality, you know, as opposed to what can I get from everybody? Like what, who do I need to meet so that I can get like almost yeah. use them as the rung in the ladder you're climbing. Um, but a much more like, Hey, like, I know where I'm going loosely. Who are the people that I should be surrounding myself? And then what, what kind of, how can I bring so much value to them that it's like a no, that then the, the returns just natural, you know? And that's how I think I've tried to live my life is one that just give, like give everywhere. (laughs) Don't, don't hold like a ledger on like, Oh, I've invested this much in this relationship, this much over here. Like, Oh, uh, they owe me, you know, or like, you know, it's like not like, you know, I think when you just zero ledger, you're just constantly like someone who, you know, has boundaries. <laughs> Obviously, I think I think the the danger for personalities that are more people pleasing and all of that is you yeah. can just give, give, give and then yeah. burn out. Um, so it's definitely yeah, a, people can take advantage of and that, yeah. take advantage and see that. And so it's a boundary kind of <laughs> giving, um, but definitely like an abundance mentality where you're just like, hey, I'm not uh, it's not about a. Con, you know, contractual kind of, you know, conditional thing. It's not about who I'm doing this so that you owe me. It's just, Hey, if I've got space and I care and I can support you or help you out with that or point you this direction, I will, you know? Yeah. This and, job is given this, this type of craft and talent or not talent, but um, learned ability mm-hmm. has opened that for so many things. There's so many people that I go, man, I, you know, I used to teach workshops. I've got yeah. this big book of knowledge just sits around now. Like, do you want to do like a crash course workshop today? Let mm-hmm. me like, let me look at your whole business up and down, yeah. left and right. And like, here, it's all for you. It's all free. Just, mm-hmm. it will help you succeed. Or, oh, an actor friend needs headshots and they don't have the money to do it. Well, dude, let's go take, yeah. let's go take an hour and go take some pictures. Like when well, you don't know where so easy for me, it mean it's as yeah. easy as breathing. So let's just do it like yeah. free. You can buy me a coffee or something. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't know. I think what I've seen too, is you don't know where the people you just give freely end up in five years, 10 years. Yeah. And it's not about that. Cause it doesn't matter. It's like, they don't have to be anywhere. Um, but I have seen in a unique way, you're just like that full circle kind of, Oh, five years. Like you helped someone out five years ago and oh, look what they're doing now, you know? Yeah. And, Oh, you know, and without fail, it's like, you might've been the one that was years ahead of them at the time. And it's like, you watch their growth trajectory or what they do and how they develop and what, and I've seen people that, you know, you invest in and then like years later, it's like they're bringing you along on something or they're yeah. inviting you to help them with the this or thing is it's really like, big. I, I, I just think about the people that did it for mm-hmm. me. Like at the yeah. beginning, there was multiple photographers, people, friends, business mm-hmm. partners, whatever, who didn't, I mean, they wasted their time. They spent hours of their time mm-hmm. doing, getting nothing in return yeah. other than me asking questions mm-hmm. and picking their brain. And I, it's only right that I do that to the same thing. Like yeah. if I, if I can if I can offer this and give it to friends or people that I meet or people that are in need, like mm-hmm. I think it's, it just makes sense. It's part of it. Yeah. No, I think I, I think we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like so, that. Give, for, give, yeah. give first mentality is a good, um, a good quote for this. Yeah. Man, we didn't have a plan for this at all. And that, that worked out <laughs> so great. I love it. This has been like a such good emotional deep dive. Yeah. Um, awesome. So what do you got going on next? What's, uh, what's in the works for you and Socality coming up? Um, honestly, we're done our online programming for the summer, which is kind of nice. Um, we're going to pick things back up in the fall. So a lot of just prepping for some exciting, yeah, workshops and stuff coming up in the fall. And then, um, and then a couple, couple big in-person events, one in Calgary, one in Toronto. Um, we've done this last year, booked a 
like a sailboat um Whoa, cool. in toronto so we do this big like sunset sail um with like i don't know we had like 150 craters on this boat last year and it was like not sunset the That's conditions awesome. were perfect so we're doing that again uh end of june and then usually on that front we'll kind of take a couple months off over the summer just because everyone's traveling everyone wants to get out and do stuff and then we have a pretty uh, pretty full september planned with um i think like three different cities and like really picking things back up. Um, so yeah, just getting all that planned out and then, yeah. Um, yeah. You'll have to get of, a Chicago one. Come on down. We can hang. Yeah. We want to, honestly, that's like kind of post COVID. It's like, we're looking at eventually here as we get some of these capabilities wrapped up on, on the Canada side, eventually getting back into planning us stuff again. Cause we used to do that way more and definitely yeah. like, there's so many incredible creatives, you know, in the major cities in the States. So we'd love to kind of get back down and collab, but maybe even do some with you guys at some point, that'd be fun. Do a little, uh, yeah. narrative, um, thing, you know, and it's somewhere we could kind of see what could work, but, um, yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be a cool, like definitely. cool little, uh, pop-up or something we could do. Doesn't have to be yeah, crazy, but that a bit. yeah, really cool. but I think we'd be game for something for sure. Yeah. Sick. Well, thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, thanks yeah, for man. chatting. So emotionally depthful today. I really appreciate it. I, I, I love that we didn't have a plan for it and we ended up down in that rabbit hole because yeah. it's just a place that I think about regularly. So uh, that's been great. Thanks for taking the time today, John. Of course, man. And um, I'm stoked for next time. Yeah, we'll connect again.